All right, so we're going to dive into the bag here. This is uh, a, a special operations group, SOG. is a SOG bag. I picked it up, like 40, 50 bucks, Field and Stream. Uh, they were available at Walmart, a lot of other places. Um, a couple of things I look for in bags. Uh, you want quality, but you don't have to pay ridiculous prices to get quality. There's some really good bags out there for under 100 bucks. Step up to 125, 150, you can get some great bags. The Rush 511 series, you know, the, the, the 511 Rushed series, you know, the 12, 24, and 36 models are great bags. They start at about 100 bucks, go up to 150. They're really good bags. This is a nice bag. This is well stitched, well put together. Some pretty good features. There's a lot of things I like about it. There's some things I don't like about it. Some thing, I'm just going to point out the things that I think are important in a bag. The bottom line on bags is it doesn't really matter what brand of bag you get, and it doesn't really matter. There's no one can tell you what bag is the right one for you. What you have to do is define what you need the bag to do for you, and then find the appropriate size bag for that. Make sure it's well built, sturdy, good stitching, and there's a few features that I do recommend you have that I really like. One of the first ones on the outside of this bag, got this fold down flap. This is really nice. Okay, I can take and put something in here. Put a rain jacket. I can put a heavier coat, a sweatshirt, uh, my motorcycle helmet. I can put a larger item in here that won't go in the bag that maybe I don't need on it all the time. But if I'm going to leave my vehicle, which has my rain gear in it, I may want to stick my rain gear in here because I know that you know I may run into some rain. Now, if it's the dry time of year, I may not have to do that. So this is just a really nice feature to have, to be able to put larger items on the bag, keep them outside and accessible. The other two items that I really recommend, chest straps and a waist strap. Waist strap down here at the bottom. Those two things spread the load out. They make the load far more secure. When you're gonna be trying to walk over uneven terrain, you may be climbing, you may be crawling, you may be going through tight spaces. You may be trying to get away from someone who wants your stuff. Okay, the more secure you can have the load, the better you have it distributed across your body, the easier it's going to be on your body. 25, 30 pounds doesn't sound like a lot. So you put it on your back and you try to walk 10 miles with it. You know, it's something you need to do. You need to practice. So, let's dive into the bag. I'm gonna go through this rather, relatively quickly. We're not gonna go into too much detail. Just kind of show you how I've got mine set up and maybe to give you some ideas on how you can get your set up. First thing, water. One quart Nalgene bottle, refillable. This screws right onto my water filter that I have in my bigger bag. I've got a smaller filter in here that can fill this up just fine. Three days, water is number one on your list. Can't survive without water, gotta have it. On the other side of the bag, Got ammo, 50 rounds for my carry gun. Okay, you don't know what you're gonna run into, especially if you carry a compact like I do. I can carry a compact single stack gun. Only got 12 rounds on the gun. I want a little bit more. Okay, front compartment, first aid kit. Okay, these kits are something I put together. Again, inspired by. Uh, nothing fancy. He did something very similar. I modified it a little bit. This is not a, an end-all be-all first aid kit. This is primarily focused on handling the things that you're going to run into in this situation and in daily life. One of the most common things that kills people, and, and like I said, I've been a firefighter EMT for almost 30 years now. One of the, the, one of the things that kills people the quickest and the most that is actually somewhat manageable is blood loss. Blood loss sends you into shock. Once you get into shock, if, if you don't get that blood supply replenished, it's good night, Gracie. Sorry, there's just nothing we can do about it. But this kit is really designed to be small. I put it in my bag, I can take it out, put it in a pocket of my, my BDUs, put it in a pocket of my cargo pants, take it with me. Even if I have to abandon the rest of my bag, I can still take medical stuff with me. It's fairly inexpensive to build because you go to you go to Walmart, you go to Walgreens, you can buy four by fours, two by twos, 
band-aids, iodine, gloves, cotton balls, trauma dressings, 5x9 blood stoppers. All this stuff is available. Walmart, Walgreens, bulk packs. You get 10, 15, 20 in a pack, 25 in a pack. Put together a kit. I built these. Every vehicle has one. All the kids' backpacks have them. They go to school. Some kid gets hit by a car, falls off his bike. Whatever the case may be, they got something that they can use to stop the bleeding. Beyond that, you know, you stop the bleeding, then you can worry about a lot of the other problems. There's a lot of them you can't solve in the field without some additional equipment and some additional personnel or getting to a hospital. But this one is one that will kill you fairly quickly. If you bleed out, you're done. We need to stop that. These kits are like 12, 14 bucks to put it together. Uh, is what it cost me to build this kit. Keep them everywhere. They're easy, portable, off you go. Inside the upper pocket, got a number of things. Pocket survival guide, SAS. Headlamp, hands-free, hands-free light. Now, pull this out today. This is why you check your gear, guys. Dead batteries. Hadn't checked in a while. Pocket Road Atlas. Doesn't give you a lot of detail, but at least kind of gives you general directions. Where are major highways, where are major population centers that you can either move towards or away from, depending upon the situation. Bodies of water. You know, these are, they're handy, they're small, they're lightweight. They don't cost but a couple of bucks. Easy to keep in there. Kim light. Smaller Kim lights. Lensatic compass. Right and rain paper, very important stuff. You need to have this. You don't know what you're going to run into, and as you get stressed, as you you know, if you get dehydrated, if you're not getting the proper nutrition, which is going to be a real big challenge in, in a disaster situation, that affects your brain, your mental functions. You need to be able to write stuff down. That way, you can remember it and jog your memory. Very important. Field bath wipes, kind of a snivel gear item. A, it does kind of keep help keep you clean, which will help keep down infections. Uh, if you get any cuts, if you uh, you know tear something open, also makes you feel good. These situations are very tough mentally, so anything you can do that will kind of give you a little bit of a pick me up, big help, big help. Two flashlights, small one, little one. Certain items I have a lot of redundancy of. I also carry a flashlight in my pocket and a pocket knife in my pocket at all times. We've got eating utensils. We've got a pen, a pencil, and a permanent marker. Leatherman. These are great. Watch for them around Christmas time. Home Depot always has them on sale. Lowe's has them on sale. Uh, several other retailers are have them on sale. You can pick them up for 20, 25 bucks for a Leatherman or a Gerber. Either brand is fine. They're both good. Earplugs, again, you don't know what you're going into. You don't know what you're going to be facing. Uh, so hearing protection is a good thing to have as you move through a disaster situation. Battery, to charge up my cell phone. That way, if I can, if I can reach out and make contact with my family or friends, let them know I'm okay, let them know I'm coming. Good thing to do. And then finally, a little pocket screwdriver. This is kind of the mini blades. If you can get it open... All right, straight end, Phillips end, 99 cent item, $1.99 at Walmart, Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot. Quick, easy, it's a good little ad, so you can, you can, uh, you, multiple uses, multiple uses along the way. Okay, so that takes care of all the outside pockets. Let's get into the inside pockets. Okay, first thing I want you to notice is, this bag is full, but it's not packed full. All right, there's room in here. And there's room in here for a reason. Because the contents of this bag will change based upon the seasons. Right now, I keep a set of long johns in here because it's cold. It's February in, in central Illinois. You know, in the Midwest, it gets cold, it gets snowy. So I need room to be able to put stuff in here. Plus, I also keep other stuff in my vehicle that's not in the bag that I can grab and throw in to augment 
and, and make this bag have more capabilities. 550 cord, multitude of uses. Heavier rope. As I'm traversing back to my residence, uh, this is, is useful for many things. You can use it to affect rescue, to help somebody out. You can use it to lift something up, uh, to clear a path, any one of a number of things. It's lightweight, doesn't take up a ton of room, can be very, very useful in your journey. Carry a pack of FRS radios, carry two of them in here. I keep another one in the truck so I can have three. Uh, that way if I'm traveling with someone, uh, we can both have them and communicate. I link up with somebody along the way. We can communicate if we have to separate. Also, these will be great for gathering intelligence. These are in millions of homes. People are going to turn them on. They're going to talk about what's going on. So if you listen to these, you can get some intel about what's happening in your area. And you might find out places to avoid, routes to take to avoid certain situations, or routes to take because it's free and clear and it's the most direct route. Dust mask. Again. Y'all remember the videos of 9-11 -11 when the towers came down, that big cloud of dust that came down the street? Tornadoes are the same way. Earthquakes are the same way. It kicks stuff up in the air. You don't want to get sick. Cheap, small, lightweight, doesn't take anything. Toilet paper. I don't have to explain that one. If I do, turn off, go away. Okay, high-protein food. Nuts, sunflower seeds, a little bit of chocolate in here mixed in, cliff bars, granola bars, that kind of stuff. Does a couple things. You need the fuel, you're gonna be working your body harder. Good taste, little pick-me-up. Again, helps you mentally. That that mental pick-me-up is just fantastic. Sawyer water filter. Okay, 15 bucks from Walmart. Filters gobs of gallons of water. You can put it in line in your camelback. You got to have it, got to keep that water clean. Okay, fishing kits. Depending upon your location, that may or may not be useful. Again, you're, from, you're in the desert southwest, not a lot of places to fish. I got tons around here. Stocking cap, again, it's cold. Socks and underwear. You got to take care of your feet. Feet and hands are two big things. You, if you lose use of your flippers, you're, you can't transport yourself. You can't get from point A to point B. You can't help other people. So you need to be able to take care of your flippers. You got to do that. Cooking kit. Again, Walmart, stainless steel. A couple cups inside. Allows me to heat water to cook food that I've got here in the bag as well. 